Since AARP's Community Challenge Grant Program was started in 2017, more than 1,300 projects have been funded and millions of dollars have been dedicated to making communities more livable for people of all ages. And this year, AARP is hoping to invest in even more projects. That shouldn't be difficult when you consider that last year alone, the organization received more than 3,600 applicants from nonprofits, government entities. We're being joined today by Eric Ikowski, the State Director of AARP South Dakota. He is here to tell us more about this year's application process and tell us about the new micro grant and demonstration grant opportunities available this year. Thanks Welcome. For being here. Hello, thank you for having me. We love talking about this topic with you because it's a great opportunity for everyone to access some of the money that really makes these communities more livable for people. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great program and it's fun to watch all the great projects that are coming through across South Dakota. You know, we've funded um, I think like 27 grants over the years in South Dakota, about $280,000 being put out into South Dakota communities. And they're doing amazing projects. You know, you've got these community gardens, you've got walk studies, you've got um, public benches, things like that in public parks and things like that. It's really a great way for us to show up in community and help communities become more livable for people of all ages. Yeah, I do love that. You are dedicated to helping people um, that are AARP members, right? You're the, that population, but it really does help it, everybody. It helps everybody. And that's one of our, our founders' biggest models was what we do for one, we do for all. And that's really found really strongly in these grant opportunities because it really truly does impact the entire community. Absolutely. Let's talk about some of the flagship grants. Yeah, so flagship grants, those are the ones that we've been doing for the, uh, I think we started in, like you said, 2017, so seven, eight years now. Um, those are really the grants that are, again, like I mentioned, um, community gardens. Um, I think one of, the, one of the popular ones here in Sioux Falls that have turned into a, a long-term uh, project was the 8th Street traffic calming measure between um, Sanaz and um, our wine bar. There's the, the right. bump out and the... That was an ARP Community Challenge grant back 2018, 2019. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know so, that. So, and that's that. Tur that was a project uh, that was just going to be a demonstration, but that turned into a permanent structure there. So, those are those things that are happening across communities across South Dakota that are permanent fixtures now because of these grants. Yeah, absolutely. What are the capacity building micro grants? So, the capacity building micro grants are um, you basically get a grant of around twenty five hundred dollars, but then you also get national technical assistance from groups like America Walks, um, League of Bicyclists, um, our Home Fit program. These grants really allow smaller nonprofits, um, you know, like neighborhood associations, things like that, mm -hmm. that don't have those dollars themselves, but or the technical abilities either, uh, that maybe want to make their neighborhood a little bit more safer for walkers, bikers, whatever, um, they can they can apply for these grants and then have that technical assistance that provides not only those funds, but also guidance on how to do a walk audit, how to do a bike audit, things wow. of that nature. Or Home Fit, which is another program that allows people to stay in their homes for longer, you know, like lowering light switches, like low cost or no cost things that keep you in your home longer. Yeah. I love capacity building things because it's got this exponential long-term effect, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you're giving somebody both the money they need to do something and the tools to do it long-term. Absolutely. Yeah. And, it, and it oftentimes leads to um, permanent structures or permanent things in place that help your neighborhood or your community or state for that matter. Yeah, I like that you actually help guide them through it too. Like that's right. one of the parts that's more difficult for most yeah, people, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And you often find, oftentimes find, or we oftentimes find that communities, you know, they're kind of struggling with like, what should we do? Like, yeah. how should we implement some of this stuff? And this is just a great way to combine both the resources, but also that technical assistance. Why reinvent the wheel, right? Re absolutely. When somebody's done it well absolutely. and has a proven record. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the demonstration grants. Yeah, so the demonstration grants are much bigger projects. They're more that $10,000 to $50,000 range. Um, they really are looking at supporting projects that really benefit the 50 plus in the community. Uh, they're more permanent. Uh, they're they're l longer lasting projects that are meant for more substantial um, projects. And, and I know we'd mentioned digital connectivity, mm -hmm. ways to connect people in in community to digital resources. You know, there's been a lot of federal funding that has come out. And even on the state side of things, we put more dollars into digital connectivity. This is just another way for communities to have another access to um, more money to implement different solutions for connecting older adults or folks that just haven't had access to the internet, how to make them more 
safe online, being able to utilize that technology. And I like the whole new thing about um, connecting communities that are divided by infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I mentioned off air, um, like Minnesota Avenue, we've got this big four lane, just obviously moving people from south to north, but it definitely disconnects downtown from the neighborhoods that are on the west side of um, Minnesota Avenue. And so a demonstration grant, it could be something along the lines of like, how do you help people get across Minnesota Avenue in a safe manner? You know, they may not, not everybody drives, mm -hmm. not everybody um, is comfortable behind the wheel, whatever the case may be. These demonstration grants, a lot that infrastructure side of it, like how can we figure out a better way to get across Minnesota Avenue and make it safer? Mm -hmm. And I'm just using Sioux Falls as an example. There's examples across South Dakota where you have a major highway going through a community, but it divides that community. How do you make that those intersections safer for people to come to get across that highway. Right. What tips do you have for people who are wanting to apply for this to really make sure their application is strong and yeah. maybe get to know the fit for AARP and their organization? There's a ton of guidance on our website. I think you've got the, the graphic up, uh, mm -hmm. aarp.org slash community challenge. Like I said, tons of guidance out there. Um, I would just say that there's so many different options too. Yeah. Like it's hard to even give advice because right. there are so many options of what, we, what we're what we providing grants for. Um, really think about your community and, and thinking about everybody, not mm -hmm. just the 50 plus population, not just kids, not just able-bodied adults, but like think of your entire community. Those are, those often tend to be the most, the strongest um, applicants. I think a lot of communities have really done a lot of work to think about what they could use, what they need, how to how to build their community up. So maybe just even like reviewing what their needs are versus what your options are and what capacity Absolutely. building things you have might really find a fit pretty easy. That yeah. makes sense. And, and I would say also um, these are meant to be projects that like a city government just ha that isn't put in their budget. It, mm -hmm. These are projects that are meant to be. Um, things that the community feels are a strong need in the community, but they just haven't dedicated those resources to that need. Um, so these, like I said, these are quick hit grant opportunities that are supposed to be completed by the end of December. So when you think of like a timeline of about seven, eight months mm -hmm. in a South Dakota, like you've got to like get that stuff out of the you way. So you work. can't be a really huge project unless you've got a lot of partners that are helping you do that project too. Right, right. right. Well, thank you Thanks. so much for stopping yeah, by. Absolutely. A lot of great opportunities happening. Thank you. Want to know more about the resources AARP South Dakota has to offer or need information on how to become a member? Simply call 866-542-8172 or head online to aarp.org sd. Don't forget to like their Facebook page, AARP South Dakota, to follow all the latest happenings. If you're interested in learning more about AARP's Community Challenge Grants, they are hosting a webinar on January 31st. You can find out more by going to aarp.org. If you're interested in applying, visit them online at aarp.org forward slash community challenge. Don't forget the deadline to apply is March 6th. This Kelloland Living segment has been sponsored by AARP South Dakota. For people ages 50 and older, AARP is sparking new solutions that transforms the marketplace to improve people's lives as they age.